an old poet is dying in Bolinas. A lesser known beat poet. There were others like him, unfamous names who made the beats the beats, scrawling in dirty notebooks in cafes, typing in unheated North Beach apartments, wearing gloves with the tips of the fingers cut off. Oh, you can still see his face on the wall at City Lights. He's standing in a photograph in a row of poets behind Ferlinghetti and Ginsburg. Hardly recognizable because he still had a full head of hair then. He'd come to California from Minneapolis and found poetry and women. In the City Lights picture, he's wearing a ferocious ferocious grin. He's a foot soldier in Ginsburg Army of Jesters. He'd kill for poetry for sure. But honey baby, wouldn't it be better to fuck for it? <laughs> By the time I came to know him, he was still smiling. He smiled all the time. I believe he was one of those rare birds, a truly happy soul. I used to see him in the bar when he could still walk, shuffling around, dancing by himself. He lived off poetry and the many women who'd come and gone over the decades, more of the women uh, than the poetry. He'd be the first to say. The women who'd come and the women who'd gone in and out of his little one-room cabin up on the mesa. The place smelled of mold and rot, old books and unwashed sheets. His eyes didn't quite work anymore, but he still lies in bed holding a book over his face. What else are my hands good for? Oh, well, thank Eros. He still has filthy dreams. <laughs> a man who used to write 10, 20, 30 poems a day. Sometimes, even now, a line will emerge out of the fog of morning. The only defense against man's envy is not to be enviable. Who said that? Did I say that? Why not? <laughs> now I can say I've said anything. <laughs> Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your toes, and he'll laugh till his ribs hurt. He'll take pain over emptiness every night. An old friend, his neighbor, from across the road, sits beside his bed and reads him to sleep. And every once in a while, she pauses and says, aren't you weary, Henry? Would you like me to stop? And he answers, yes it is. Isn't it wonderful? And when he's alone, those long hours he's awake and waiting for the dawn to creep through the windows, he listens to the ocean and considers the total uselessness of sleep when there's no body beside you. He never had much talent. He'd always known it. Ginsburg once said, don't worry, Hank. You got a poetic face. <laughs> and he thinks about how they used to call out, 
how when they approached his cabin, they always, always, before knocking, called out his name. 